Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Collecting Dust with me, John, uh, host of the Nothing Podcast with Nobody Important, with uh, my old friend Frank there. And uh, you're here in my collection room once again. As you can see, for the first time, the cabinet is open. We are exploring inside the cabinet. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background on what you see behind me. So behind me here is a set of Muppet figures. They are Muppet action figures from the early 2000s from a company called Palisades. You'll hear me refer to them as the Palisades Muppets. Um, so Palisades was a company that would make very niche sort of collections of stuff and they became known for making these Muppets because they are so well molded and so like on point that the fans just love them. Um, they were hard to come by, but they were going strong with things that you could not imagine you'd ever get an action figure form for your house. And then the company went bankrupt in 2006. And when the company went away, there was a lot of things left over that you know, and it just never came to fruition. And you'll hear me talk about one of those next week. But this week, I thought I would start to take you through my Muppets Palisades collection. I do not have everyone. I have every individual character that's been made. There are characters in different outfits. There are some that were hyper exclusive that I have not gotten. I'm not going to say I won't get them eventually, but to track down the entire set would be really difficult. Although I have the the hard to find pieces already. Um, so I'm going to start with this shelf, which is my Electric Mayhem shelf. You can take a look at it there first before we get into talking about the individual pieces in there. Um, it's I mean it's a it's an Electric Mayhem slash musician shelf. Uh, and the thing is, I remember where and how I got pretty much each one of these. And I'll give you a brief background as we do them week to week. And I'm not going to do these all in, in a row. So like this week is this, and then next week will be something else. And eventually I'll get through them. So this is, um, and here's Dr. Teeth. Now, Dr. Teeth was the first one that I ever got. And I did not know that this set existed. I happened to be in Toys R Us and I saw an action figure of Dr. Teeth. And I said, what is this? And... Lo and behold, that was the start of me with the Palisades set. Uh, they had Dr. Teeth, they had Crazy Harry, they had Kermit in a tuxedo, and that was it at the time. I obviously bought all three, and then that it just snowballed from there. But I had no idea the set existed. I went home, I was like, what? The? You know, the internet was a different place in, in the early 2000s, but I definitely searched all I could to find, you know, uh, all I could about them. So that's Dr. Teeth. Uh, then in there you have, as well, Janice and Floyd here. And Janice, I don't remember exactly where I got her from, but I do know that there is a chase variant. For those collectors out there know that a chase variant is a alternate color that was harder to find. I believe that this is the chase variant. It's um, silver. She's got a silver top, whereas the other one has a pink top. I don't know which is which. I, this I have the one with the silver top. Um, most of these are in mint condition. These ones are hard because their guitars are attached to their amps. So those were very, very easy to break. And Floyd, this is my second Floyd. The first one I had, uh, he, I won't take him out, but he's got a ponytail in the back. The first one I had came without the ponytail. For the longest time, I thought he just had a hole in the back of his head. I don't know. I, um, and eventually when I realized that he... Was supposed to have it i ordered a new one um and i gave the old one to my nephews who still have it the thing about these if you'll notice is they're out of the box now you'd think that that makes them less valuable and with these it does um however i'm an out-of-box collector typically when i buy things now this company went under in 2006 if i still buy them now i'll buy them on ebay I will look for ones that are out of box or in a damaged box. That way that I don't feel as guilty taking it out. Very rare will I buy something that's mint on card and tear open the box. I can't really bring myself to do that. So I try to find exclusives, um, I try to find excuses 
That's why I don't do that. So we're moving on quickly in this shelf. Uh, Clifford is back there. I bought him at Donut Connection uh, by my junior high, a block for my junior high. Um, he was one of the later figures to come out. He's from Muppets Tonight. Eventually, they moved away from the Muppet Show into Muppets Tonight, and Clifford was part of that set. Um, then you have back there Lips, which is probably in my top three favorite of the Muppet figures I have because I love his character, which there is no character, really. He has no character, but I love that he's like the extra member of the band. He's become part of it now, which is really cool, but he's often forgotten. Um, so I love they made him. There's a variant of him as well in a silver dashiki instead of a white one. Um, I don't have that either. Again, I don't have any of the variants. I didn't collect them. There's also a, a Floyd in, in blue. Um, then here is Zoot, which is potentially the last one I got. He's the hardest to find. Um... He, I had to buy him mint on card and take him out of the box, unfortunately. The truth of the matter is, these figures nowadays, some of them are easier to find, you can get them, but a lot of them sell for 100 plus on eBay now. Zoot, I paid 120 for. Um, there was no other option, and there is still no other option. To try to find him with his accessories, with the saxophone, with the hat, you had no choice. You had to get it the way that they were going to give it, which is that. And there's a couple others you'll see eventually that are like that as well. And then back there is Animal, who came with the Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem stage. That was the first play set. That came out with the first set. Um, I think they did one, two, three, four, five different play sets. Um... The playsets are really elaborate. That's the thing. And I, it may not translate on camera, but these are really detailed. And the playsets are very, very detailed. I think that's why the company went under. They cost too much to make, but you can tell. Um, that was the very first set. It was very hard to come by. I did not get it in its initial run. I did have to order it on eBay eventually because it was just impossible to find. But um, So that's the starter set. That one I could do them all at once. A set... Like some of these other ones, where there's a lot of characters in there, I probably have to split it in half. I can't do this with all of them. But uh, so that's my Electric Mayhem set on there. They have all their accessories and things they came with. I also keep this on there with them, which is a Hot Wheels of the Electric Mayhem bus. And it's as detailed as you can get as far as uh, all the airbrush painting on there. Very, very cool. I love that. So I keep that with them. And you'll see that the way I have them displayed is sort of thematic. But uh, yeah, that's the first set of the Palisades Muppets. Um, let's go take a look at an unrelated movie. All right. So uh, I made a decision that uh, whenever episodes that I do anything from the Palisades Muppets set, um, it's hard to find movies that connect to that. Uh, obviously, there's Muppet movies, but how often can you do that? So basically, whenever I do an episode based on the Palisades Muppets, I'm going to pick something just cool from my collection that I want to show you. So now that that's covered, um, this week I decided to go with this, which is the Harry Potter Hogwarts collection. I had a Harry Potter collection already when I got this. That was all six movies. And I gave it away. It was about $100. I gave it away so I could buy this one. I just loved the artwork. I loved that it represented every character. Some people don't like um, busy, messy artwork. And then some people go the complete opposite direction. I love simplicity. I love when it's just one logo or something. But when, when you have every character in the franchise represented, that gets me more. I like that better. I don't know why. You know, it's not the neatest way to do it, but I think it's sometimes really, really well done. And with all the villains on one side and the heroes on the other side, I think this one was really, really cool. So I'll show you a little bit of the inside. So there's that. Um, oh, those are my digital codes. Don't look at those. Even though they're probably expired by now. Uh, so now what we've got in here, for every movie you have the Blu-ray, the DVD, the special features, and an extra bonus special features. 
um, to my knowledge, once you'll get into it, you'll see this is Chamber of Secrets. And all the discard is exclusive to this set, which is really cool. So that's, this is all the special pieces you could possibly want from these movies. Um, and it's all different special features you have. That's Prisoner of Azkaban. And here you have Goblet of Fire, which are the two, admittedly, that I have never seen. I know. We're going to get to them. So we got Blu-ray and DVD of every movie so far. This is Order of the Phoenix. For some reason, Order of the Phoenix doesn't have a second special features. Maybe that just wasn't interesting in the making of that one. I don't know. This is Half-Blood Prince. So then once you get into Deathly Hallows, it has Blu-ray, DVD, bonus features, 3D Blu-ray. Um, I believe these were the only two that were released in 3D, which is why they're included. So this set really gives you everything you could have wanted. And then a final Blu-ray bonus disc that all the special features on here on this disc can only be found in this set. They don't exist anywhere else. And that's... You have Hogwarts at the beginning, and then you have Hogwarts at the end, which is really cool. Um, and there's the back. So this set doesn't hold up only because one of the selling points for it was that it came with the 3D Blu-rays, which of course, 3D technology for the home has sort of gone away, which I'll admit was a little surprising. I mean, admittedly, I have a number of 3D movies, none that are only 3D. Just one, I, if it came with a 3D option, I got it. And given the option, if I was to buy a new TV today, I would want, you know, the 4K, Ultra HD, all that. If they still made one that featured 3D, I would get it because I have so many th movies in 3D, but they just don't make them anymore which is really weird that like for the longest time selling 3D movies at home was the thing and then it just completely went away. So they do not make that anymore. Um, but yeah, so this is my Harry Potter set and I love it. Like I said, it's got nothing really to do with the Muppet stuff we talked about before, but that's kind of going to be the pattern. Um, so yeah, that's that. And I will see you next week.